Hello, and welcome to week number eight, Algebra 2. Let's get going. This week, we are going to be talking about how to rewrite equivalent forms of exponential and logarithmic functions. We're also going to be able to write and evaluate and graph logarithmic functions. You can write an exponential equation as a logarithmic equation and vice versa. And that's one of the things that we're going to really spend a lot of time on this week because it's one of those things where kids don't understand that a logarithm is an exponent. And once you understand that a logarithm is an exponent, it's not as scary. I mean, some kids, they look at logs and it's like, oh, I can't do these types of problems. But as soon as you realize that a logarithm is an exponent, it's not so bad. So let's take a look. If I gave you a problem like the log, whoops, I'm gonna write this in a little bit less here. Let me change the color too. Um, if I gave you something like the log base three of nine is equal to two, and I asked you to rewrite this as an exponent. Well, you can rewrite any log as an exponent. The base is going to be the base of the exponent. Okay, so this would be three and then is equal to, so this is gonna be three to the second power is equal to nine. So this right here is exactly the same thing as this right here. So the log base three of nine is equal to two is the exact same thing as if I rewrote three squared is equal to nine. So that is the whole concept for, well, a lot of the concept for this week is being able to rewrite a logarithm as an exponent and an exponent as a logarithm. So if I had this and I wanted to go back to this form, this is my base. So this is going to be the log base three of nine is equal to two. So I can go both directions. I should be able to rewrite a logarithm as an exponent and an exponent as a logarithm. And once you can do that, then it's, you know, cause then it's like, okay, if you have a logarithm and you, you're really confused, just rewrite it as an exponent. And that's what I always do. So for example, if I gave you some of these problems, it says rewrite each equation in logarithmic form. Okay, not a problem. So this is my base here. Oops, I better turn on my marker. This is my base. So this is gonna be the log base 81 of nine is equal to one half. Here I have 16 squared is equal to 256. I could rewrite this as a logarithm. So the log base 16 of 256 is equal to two. Here, this would be the log base seven of 49 is equal to two. And this one would be the log base 12 a, a 144 is equal to two. So I can rewrite an exponent as a logarithm. And then I should also be able to go backwards. I should be able to rewrite logarithms as exponents. So this is my base here. Turn on my marker again. This is my base. So this is going to be X to the Y power is equal to 191. Here, this would be five to the negative second power. So five to the negative second power is equal to N. This one would be five to the 19th power is equal to X. And this one would be N to the negative six is equal to M. So I can rewrite a logarithm as an exponent. And why is that important? Because when we start solving these types of problems, that's one of the easiest things to do is when we start solving, I always tell kids, if it's a logarithm, rewrite it as an exponent, probably be a lot easier to solve. But then again, sometimes when you have exponents, it's easier to solve as a logarithm. So we kind of rewrite them back and forth. There are some properties um, for logarithms that you really want to know. And, you know, it's really interesting. You know, I sometimes I'll give a student it, really to understand if they understand what's going on, I'll give them a problem and I'll say, okay, what is the log base to a four? And if they can look at it and tell me what the answer is there, then it's like, okay, they really understand logarithms. Do you guys know what the answer is? What is the log base to a four equal to? And what you could do is you could just rewrite it like this. You can say, okay, that's is equal to X. So I'm going to rewrite this as an exponent. So two, 
to what power is equal to four? Well, two to the second power is equal to four, so x equals two. So the log base two of four is equal to two. Now, I always do it shorthand. I always just, in my head, it's like, okay, two to what power is equal to this number? That's what a logarithm really means. So if I gave you something like the log base two of eight is equal to x, and I asked you, what is x? Well, two to what power is equal to eight? Well, two to the third power is equal to eight, so log base two of eight is three. That's how you come up with those logs. Now, it, here's this rule should make sense then. So if you had the log base five of five is equal to x, well, what does that equal? Shouldn't it equal one? Because five to the first power is equal to five. So the log base five of five is equal to one. So anytime you have the same thing. So if I had the log base seven of seven, that's gonna equal one. If I had the log base, oops, sorry, the log base nine of nine, that equals one because nine to the first power is that. And then this one should make sense also. The log base B of one is equal to zero. Well, when you look at something, if I gave you the log base five of one is equal to, well, what does that equal? Well, five to what power equals one? Well, anything to the zero power is one. So five to the zero power is one. Uh, that means my answer has to be zero there. Okay, so those are those are some of the, the rules. Uh, sorry about that, I had to sneeze there. Um, so those are um, some of the easy properties and there's there's a lot more properties for logarithms, but that's one of them and that's that, that one comes in handy a lot of the times. Okay, so a logarithm with base 10 is called a common logarithm. So if I wrote something like the log base 10 of, let's say 100, well, you should know that that equals two, right? But if, if it's base 10, we don't have to write in there. We could just rewrite the log of 100 is equal to two. If there's no base on our logarithm, it is assumed to be 10. That is the common logarithmic base. So if it's not written in there, it is assumed to be a 10 there. Evaluate by using mental math. What does that mean? It means don't use a calculator. What is my answer here? Well, I know if I was doing this problem, I know five to the second power is equal to 25. Five to the third power is equal to 125. So log base five of 125 is equal to three because five to the third power is 125. So you should be able to do these in your head. Evaluate by using mental math. Uh, some of you are gonna really struggle with this one. Five to what power is equal to one fifth? Well, I know, let me just do a pattern here. I know five to the second power is 25. I know five to the first power is five. I know five to the zero power is one. I know five to the negative one power is one fifth. Because what are we doing here? We're dividing these by five. 25 divided by five is five. Five divided by five is one. One divided by five is one fifth. So the log base five of one fifth is equal to negative one. Woo! Because five to the negative one power is one fifth. Oh, there's some tricky ones that they can put in there. <laughs> Love those types of problems. Okay, let's take a look at this. It says, express the equation in exponential form. Ah, way too easy. This would be two to the third is equal to eight. Logarithm, exponent, they are the same thing. These two things mean exactly the same thing. So I would go with letter D there. Express the equation in logarithmic form. So the third is equal to eight. Well, it's in my base. So log base two of eight is equal to three. Logarithms aren't that scary. As long as you remember, they are exponents. All right, now here's some more, more properties of logarithms. We already talked about, um, uh, did we talk about any? I guess not. Um, oh yeah, we talked about this one. Oh, we talked about this one too, okay? So we have two of them out of the way already, these two, okay? Because this is like the log base 10 of one is equal to, well, 10 to the zero power, so that's zero. And then if I have the same thing, so log base five of five is equal to one. So those two are taken care of. Now, here's another one. It says, if you have the log base A 
of a to the x, you can bring that x, whenever you have a logarithm and you have the number to a power, you can bring that to the front. So you can put that out in front. So I could rewrite, I could rewrite log base a of a x. I can bring that x to the front. So that would be x log base a of a. Well, we know what this is, right? Log base a of a is just one, isn't it? Boom. So isn't it easy enough to say that the log base a of a to the x is equal to just x or whatever that value, or I'm sorry, I should have said one here. I should have just said x, whatever that number is. So if I had, if I had log base, let's say log base two of two to the fifth power. Well, I'd bring that five to the front. So that would be five log base two of two. Well, we know what this is. It's just one. So whatever this exponent is, that's what the answer is going to be if these two numbers are the same. And then we have if the log base a of x equals the log base a of y, then x equals y. So if you have two logarithms equal to each other with the same bases, you can just cross them off. And then you just end up with x equals y. So those are two other properties that we can use. Now, there is something called the natural logarithmic function, okay? The natural logarithmic function is when the base is e. Remember, e is the number 2.71. So if you ever see something, if you ever see, and I always do this, if I ever see something as log base e, I should write it as natural log. They mean the exact same thing. So log base e is the same thing as natural log. This is the way we refer to natural log. Okay, so let's just put an x in here, an x in here. So log base e of x is equal to natural log of x. You should be able to see a, if you have a calculator, you should have that as a calculator. So now if I if I have a pro if I have a problem like the natural log of x equals five, and first thing I do is I look at this and say, okay, I'm gonna rewrite this as log base e of x equals five, and then I might rewrite this as e to the fifth is equal to x. All of these are the same thing. So you have to be able to jump back and forth. But if you ever see natural log, it just means log base e. All of the rules for logarithms are the same with natural log. Okay? They are exactly the same. So the four properties that we learned before are exactly the same for natural logs. To solve an exponential equation with the one-to-one -one property, okay, what does that mean? It means that the bases are the same here. Okay, So if you ever have exponents that are exactly the same, the bases are the same, then the exponents are equal. So I could just rewrite this problem as the three minus two X is equal to negative X. And then if I solve that, I might add two X to both sides here. So I end up with three is equal to one X, X equals three. So my answer is X equals three. Now I could, so I could check myself. I could put three back in here, three minus two times three, that's six. So three minus um, six is negative three. So five to the negative third. And if I put three in here, I end up with five to the negative third. So that is the correct answer. Here, the bases are the same. So 2a is equal to negative a. I'm going to add a to both sides. So I end up with 3a is equal to zero. a is equal to zero. So if I put zero in here, two times zero is zero. So three to the zero is equal to three to the zero. Now, what happens? If they're not the same, but look at eight, can't I rewrite eight as two to the third power? So in this problem, I'm gonna rewrite eight as two to the third power, but I still have that X minus one there, don't I? Is equal to two to the X plus two. So now I have common bases. So now three to the X minus one is equal to X plus two. I love these problems because you have to think about what, how can I get the base to be the same? So now this would be three X minus three is equal to X plus two. And then you can solve the problem. So when you're doing a one, you, when you're solving an exponential problem, you want to make sure you get those bases to be the same. And then the exponents are equal. Logarithms, if the logs are the same on both sides, if you have one log on one side and one log on the other, and they have the same base, Okay, they have to have the same base. So the base isn't written here. So it's really a 10 here. It's not written here. So it's 10. 
So you can just cross those off. So 5x equals 2x plus 9. Subtract that off. So 3x equals 9. x equals 3. Here, I have a log on one side, log on the other side. I can just cross them off. 10 minus 4x equals 10 minus 3x. And then you can solve. So you will be solving exponential and logarithmic functions tonight. Now, there are a lot of other types of logs and exponent problems that we can solve, um, but not right now. Because if I gave you something like 4 to the 3x plus 5 is equal to 5 to 2x plus 2, there's no way you're going to get these bases to be the same thing. So there's got to be a different way to solve those types of problems. You won't know how to do that this week. There won't be any problems like that this week on the on the assessment. All of the problems will be a one-to-one -one, um, type. So they will be able to cross off. All right. I hope to see everybody at the main lesson on Monday from 10 to 11. You guys have a great week. Bye.